guys, welcome to the show. I hope you're doing well. In today's video, I'm going to reason with the logical side of your brain. This is something that just I do, right? I'm not the most sophisticated person in the world, but I try to draw logical arguments that get people to go, huh, yeah, can't really debate that one, right? That's, that's how I get people, if you will, right? It's just to reason with the logical side of your brain. So today we're not gonna be talking about sophisticated real estate arguments. We're gonna be talking about basics and why. For those of you that are sitting around, because I believe this is happening quite a bit lately, people are sitting around and they are waiting for the market, the real estate market to drop. Not slow down and return to a reasonable rate of growth, but they are looking for it to drop before they make a move. And I know this because people are telling me this. I believe you're going to be waiting for a very long time. I, I do not believe that that's coming. I'm not a, a fortune teller, but I don't think that you're about to see that happen because what's happening right now is very different than what happened in 2008. And we'll continue to kind of explore that in some future videos. But allow me to illustrate the power of paying a mortgage payment. Okay, and we're going to use uh, me in my my house. And by the way, I'm, I'm obligated to tell you, please subscribe to the channel if you have not and maybe consider leaving a freaking comment here and there. It's not going to kill you guys. Um, <clears throat> so uh, I'll leave you with this. I, I live in a a reasonable house. It's not a, a mansion. It's not a dump. It's a it's a relatively normal house, right? And I have a relatively normal mortgage payment, right? It's not on a mil. It's not a million dollar mortgage, right? And it's not an eighty thousand dollar mortgage. It's in a normal range of what we consider almost, you know, kind of a median home price in uh, Utah and you know the greater part of the U.S. right now. So <clears throat> here's why I tell you this: because when I pay my mortgage on the first of every month which happens automatically, right? It's just an auto payment that happens on the first of every month. $550 of that goes towards the principal on the mortgage. So if we just say, we're just gonna use um, rough numbers sake just to illustrate the point, right? So if my mortgage payment was 1500 a month, uh, you know, whatever, two, two, 300 of that goes into escrow, right? It goes into paying insurance and property taxes when those are due at the end of the year, those just get automatically paid. And then uh, if we say that's 300 a month, so now there's 1200 less, so we would go, okay, uh, whatever it is in the neighborhood of like 600 a month goes towards interest. Ah, oh, that sucks. I'm paying that. But 550, and that is a real number for me, $550 a month goes into paying down the principal amount that is owed on my home. So imagine that just through paying your mortgage payment, which by the way, gets you a roof over your head. That's something you're gonna do anyway. Right? Can't, can't we all agree you need a roof over your head or at the very least a bridge or a van roof or something. You need something over your head at night. <clears throat> paying my payment gets me that, which I was gonna need anyway, right? Whether I rent it, buy it, I'm, I'm gonna need that regardless. And every month it's like $550 just goes into a savings account that I just stash away, right? And one day when I decide to cash out that savings account, I get all that money back. But on top of getting all that, that those $550 monthly installments, and, and on top of getting those back, the damn thing kept appreciating over time at a, at a rate of growth way greater than you would actually get from a savings account or something like that, right? It grows closer to what you would expect to see in an investment account. So, does this make sense, guys? Every month when you just live in your house and you pay your bills, a chunk of that, a pretty decent chunk, which by the way, a chunk that grows over time. What I mean by that is in your earlier years of your mortgage, we say it's a 30 year mortgage, the earlier years, a greater percentage of that payment goes towards interest. And then in the latter half of your 30 year mortgage, bigger chunks start going towards your principal that's when you really start eating down that principal balance that you have on your house is in the second half of your mortgage payment. But just in those first few years, right? I've only been in my house, uh, I don't know, five years, something like that. So um, in these five years, every month, yeah, 550 bucks, 550 bucks, and it just keeps accumulating. And what's cool is it keeps growing every single month. Not because I keep putting more in, I do that, but because the value of the asset, the thing you live in, the thing that has the roof over your head continues to grow every month. So what is your reasoning for not buying a house if you are qualified to do so? Because again, so many of you are just sitting around and you're going, ah, I'm just gonna wait, it's gonna drop. 
don't think so. And I, I don't really think you have any data to support that. I, I think you're going on the same shit that the gun community goes on, which is like, oh, it's about to get crazy right now. Like, what's this based on, <laughs> right? Like, there's so many theoretical ideas that get thrown around. I'm telling you actual numbers here. So just consider it. Renting really gets you nothing. It gets you a roof over your head, but you are actually paying someone else's mortgage. And for that, they say, glad you're doing that. And every single year, I'm going to raise it. And your mortgage doesn't raise every year. So guys, if you're sitting around waiting, stop waiting, like you got to get this thing going. The faster, the sooner in your life, earlier in your life, you get this thing going, you will thank me. You will thank me. And I hope that um, at some point you do buy a house and you call us and you decide to use us for it. Quick bourbon. I can't say recommendation, but just a new bottle because I haven't tried it yet. 1792 Sweet Wheat. This is one of those interesting bottles that when we get it here in Utah, because Utah is a state uh, store, you know, it's run on state stores. It's not like we just have regular random uh, liquor stores. It's state stores, it's, so it's all controlled pricing. So we get these for 40 bucks here. So weird to me that these go for like 90 to 100 bucks on the secondary market. Because it's like, I haven't tried it. I mean, I hope it's spectacular, but it's just, the bourbon world is a very strange place with a, a, a fat markup on the secondary market for things like that that are allocated and a little bit tough to get. So I don't know if it's good. We'll see, but I am excited to try it. Uh, like I said, if you guys need real estate help, let us know beyond that. Hope everything is good with you and your family and your dogs and your cats and your hamsters. Um, yeah, we'll talk to you later.